From how everyone once believed the couple had a fairy tale romance to Whitney Houston's tragic passing in 2012. Here's the inside story of what really went down during Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown's turbulent relationship. The year is 1993 and the chart-topping single Something in Common is being blasted over the radio, played at clubs, and even made for catchy elevator music. There was no way to escape Houston and Brown's hit. Critics loved Something in Common for a variety of reasons. Not only was the song catchy and expressed the artist's vocal depth, but the music video also featured their young daughter, Bobby Christina Brown. The year prior, in 1992, Houston and Brown walked down the aisle and were married after a three-year-long courtship. They'd met at the 1989 Soul Train Music Awards, and it was love at first sight. Everyone was happy for the new couple and excited about their musical collaboration. Something in common success just proved that they were meant to be with each other. But while it might have seemed like the perfect union on the surface, Houston and Brown had a very rocky relationship, and it was messy from day one. Bobby admitted that he was obsessed with her from the very minute he laid eyes on her. He just didn't know how to express it. Fast forward a few years, and the two went from being friends to something more. A little while later, Bobby proposed, and Whitney immediately said yes. This could have been the beginning of a fairy tale romance if drugs had not been involved. Whitney had once admitted to having a problem. However, at the time she downplayed the extent of her drug use. She claimed that she'd only occasionally get high, while Bobby, on the other hand, recalls her only participating when he was. He claimed that the first time he saw her using hard drugs was on the night of their wedding. He stated that she was hunched over doing drugs, and that was when he realized Whitney had more than just a little problem. Bobby never claimed to be perfect during the interview. He went as far as to suggest that he'd spent weeks in a daze because of his reliance on drugs. Their addiction crept into their relationship and caused major problems for the two from the get-go. The first very public altercation reported was in 1992 during their honeymoon. A witness claimed that she heard Bobby and Whitney arguing outside of their hotel room for what seemed like hours. Bobby made a few threats, and then Whitney emerged from the room with a three-inch scar over her face. Whitney, however, downplayed the incident and claimed that she'd fallen over some broken glass. The witness was Whitney's close friend and manager at the time, Robin Crawford. In her memoir, Robin talked about how Whitney and Bobby only exasperated one another. She claimed that they stayed together at first to work things through and later on because Bobby Christina was born. However, they weren't a good match. According to Bobby, Whitney took a break from drugs during her pregnancy. However, this just meant that she relapsed harder than ever before once her daughter was born. The singer claimed that he'd have to lock his wife in a room to get her to stay off drugs for their daughter's sake. Again, Bobby had problems of his own, it was widely reported that he had a drinking problem. This came to light in 1995 when the musician was arrested for drunkenness and disorderly conduct. As far as their marriage was concerned, Whitney opened up about how the couple desperately wanted another child. She was very candid about her struggles and admitted to having two miscarriages, once in 1994 and once in 1997. This contributed more to the couple's troubles. It also didn't help that the press accused Bobby of being a wife beater. Bobby has since denied the claims. He stated that they would get into nasty spats off and on, but things never turned violent. This was questioned in 1998 when Whitney was seen with a scar over her cheek. It was reported that she had to have two stitches for the injury. Whitney, of course, downplayed her marriage troubles. When asked about the scar, she claimed that she was swimming in the family's pool and hit herself with a rock. A crew member who was there at the time, however, claimed that Bobby had assaulted her. The singer would later tell the press that everyone painted Bobby out to be someone he wasn't. She maintained that he was a sweet and gentle man. When the two first got together and the press tried to hound her to comment on Bobby's bad boy reputation, she said they knew his public persona and not the real him. Their relationship was confusing to the public. While Whitney claimed that Bobby had never hit her and never would, it was Whitney who called the police on him in December 2003. She called 911 and claimed that her husband had struck her with an open hand. Bobby had allegedly fled the scene by the time the police arrived. Still, he was apprehended and a trial took place. Whitney was seated during the trial and had a visible injury on her face. The court sentenced Bobby for assaulting his wife, although he claimed that it was mutual. 
Despite the trial, Whitney and Bobby stayed together. The two were seen on camera talking to one another after Bobby's sentencing. Whitney claimed that no relationship was perfect, and just like everyone else, she and Bobby had their ups and downs too. Bobby maintained that he didn't hit Whitney that night. In fact, in 2016, he reported that it was a mystery to him why his former wife would even call the police. Allegedly, he was in the middle of an altercation with the couple's drug dealer, and Whitney tried to intervene. In her mind, calling the police would get him to stop. Everyone knew their relationship was explosive, and it didn't help that Whitney was very visibly dazed during some of her interviews. That's when she decided to take matters into her own hands and signed up for a one-month-long rehab program. Unfortunately, Whitney only stayed at the facility for five days. Her representative told the press that Whitney decided to come back home to care for her daughter and was still taking all the necessary precautions for the treatment. Bobby would later admit that the two tried very hard to get clean for their daughter's sake. He told Nightline that it was an uphill battle. If he wanted to get sober, Whitney would exasperate him. If she wanted to get off drugs, he'd trigger her addiction just the same. It was very obvious that they just weren't meant to be together. While their close friends and family had already recognized that the two were better off apart, Bobby claimed that the pair tried to make things work. They were very much in love, despite all the drug use and allegations of abuse. It wasn't until they saw that their daughter was getting influenced by the mix of it all that they decided to separate. This happened in 2006 when Whitney filed for legal separation. Bobby had agreed to the separation and the two had once agreed on an amicable divorce. However, things soon turned bitter again. Until now, besides the 2003 incident, Whitney and Bobby had stuck by one another. They never openly admitted to problems in their marriage or called each other out to the press. When it came to the matter of custody of Bobby Christina in 2006, they immediately turned on one another. That's when the allegations of rampant drug use and abuse were made public. Bobby claimed that Whitney was an unfit mother because she was never sober. Whitney in turn pointed at Bobby's track sheet and legal issues. She claimed that he would always be drunk in front of their child. Whitney even called him an unfit parent. Bobby wanted, amongst other things, shared custody of their daughter, child support, and spousal support. It was reported that he was homeless at the time and heavily reliant on Whitney for support. He filed several lawsuits and claims against her, but sometimes he'd skip the meetings. The press assumed Bobby was looking for a payoff, and Whitney was finally saying no. Whitney also went public about what happened during their marriage. In her tell-all interview with Oprah in 2009, Whitney admitted that Bobby wasn't the gentleman she'd portrayed him to be. She stated that he had started hating her very early on in their marriage. She claimed that she stuck around because she loved him and wanted a stable father figure for their daughter, but Bobby was too far gone by that point. According to Whitney, he was jealous of her success. While Whitney was busy making record deals, Bobby was trying to salvage his fading career. He also didn't like how the press referred to him as Whitney's husband. The pair had divorced in 2007, and during her 2009 interview with Oprah, Whitney claimed that she was on her way to getting sober. Unfortunately, Whitney Houston was found unresponsive in her hotel room on February 11, 2012. She'd appeared intoxicated in the days leading up to her death. Her autopsy report listed accidental drowning as her cause of death and police found a concoction of drugs that included cocaine in her system. What makes this case even more unfortunate is that the couple's daughter, Bobby Christina, died in the same manner as her mother in 2015. During his interview with Nightline, Bobby started sobbing, claiming that many people believed he was to blame for his former wife and child's deaths. So, from Whitney Houston's tragic death in 2012, which sent shockwaves around the world to how everyone once thought the couple had a fairy tale romance, these were the inside secrets of Whitney and Bobby's turbulent relationship.